with our television lights because they want to keep the area darkened for security purposes. Richard? Yeah, the option is to put lights on the other side and shoot back the other way. We've chosen to stay here, and again, we can see our night scope here. We may show you that in a minute. The gunfire has stopped once again at the complex, but we're still told to stay in, lights out. Earlier today, federal agents stormed that complex with a search warrant, looking for the leader of the cult group. They were met with a uh, barrage of gunfire. At least four agents were killed, 14 others were injured. The agents backed off the building, outgunned, and asking for a ceasefire to care for their wounded. Remarkable scene. The officers were taken to local hospitals in Waco. Several are in critical condition. The ceasefire lasted until about 7 o'clock tonight. Then three members of the cult group came outside with their guns blasting. We're told at least one of them was killed by law enforcement officials, another captured. Another, possibly wounded, went back inside the compound. Again, over radio tonight, David Koresh has said that there is a two-year-old, a two-year-old girl inside dead. We've been told that four children have been released. There may be several cult members inside that are wounded. We don't know that now, but that's uh, one of the things I think that the uh, authorities are trying to negotiate now is, is how to get those people out of there without any further bloodshed. And earlier, Richard Koresh said that he was also one of the injured people, but again, that has not been confirmed. Thank you. Richard Ray, near Waco, and of course, Richard will be staying there along with our Channel 4 News crews to keep us up to date until this thing has ended. Coming up, more on today's deadly shootout near Waco. The first sports and big test. Dividian. Until changing his name two years ago, Koresh was Vernon Howell, who, among other things, claims he is Jesus Christ. Koresh and his followers believe he holds the power to trigger events which will end the world. Within seconds after the federal agents knocked out windows and began to enter the heavily fortified house, the cult's capacity for violence became apparent. Armed with modified semi-automatic weapons, cultists may have been tipped off by a phone call before the raid. Waiting for the ATF agents was a virtual wall of gunfire. The gun battle raged for some 45 minutes with literally thousands of rounds of bullets fired into the house. When it was over, one ATF agent was dead and three others mortally wounded. Fifteen additional agents suffered bullet wounds or broken bones as they jumped from windows and the roof of the building. As agents dragged the dead and dying from the line of fire, care flight helicopters, ambulances, and even private cars were pressed into action to take the wounded to Waco hospitals. Bullets were flying over our heads, they were hitting the news unit, they were about two feet from our feet, and we just didn't know. I expected to get hit. I didn't, I didn't, didn't expect to die, but I expected maybe to get hit. Uh, was the gunfire stopped? Is that when you left? No, we could not leave. Uh, the only time we left is when there was a truth called uh, American Medical Transport, the ambulance came in, driven by an ATF agent. Uh, they carried their people to the ambulance. There was not enough room, so we offered our unit as an ambulance. By late afternoon, an uneasy silence fell over the cult compound, and what was called a ceasefire held. We practiced for it. They drilled over and over again, and we had our plan down. We had a diversion down. All were put into effect, and... They were waiting. As the ATF was holding the first of several news briefings, scores of other law officers began arriving at the scene, and an armored personnel carrier was driven to a staging area near the compound. Under cover of darkness, there was another outbreak of shooting. Three cult members apparently tried to shoot their way out, trading gunfire with agents. One man was killed, and two others were captured. Let's go back to Richard Ray, who's live at the compound now near Waco. And Rich, we've learned quite a bit about this cult leader. And we're learning more all the time. Right now, David Koresh has been on and off the radio with various stations around the country. He has told them that two adults were shot, apparently including himself, but both were flesh wounds. Another thing, a local sheriff's deputy tells us there were not 30 children in this compound when it started, but only 11. Koresh says one, a two-year-old uh, girl, is dead. Four have been released. And Koresh has said in radio interviews that he will release children two by two if they play his religi religious message on radio. Finally, authorities may be settling in for a long siege. They've scheduled a press conference for 10.30 a.m. All right, Richard Ray, thank you very much.
We will continue to monitor the cult standoff near Waco. Our crews outside the compound will stay on the scene throughout the night. We'll be here in the studio. Whenever there is a development, we'll break into programming and tell you what's happened. And of course, remember, for complete coverage of the cult shootings and standoff, join us for News for Texas Sunrise at 6 a.m. Good night. These two have already been released due to an earlier similar agreement. Now we've been, uh, we're inside here trying to keep the lights off, but we're going to roll a little bit of videotape here that we shot. As you can see the road here, as a car goes down and illuminates it a little bit, you can see all the ambulances that are lined up here as that car heads towards the police command post. It's down there that about 200 or more officers are waiting and hoping that this thing ends peacefully, but preparing and uh, in case it does not. Now, as uh, you see here a little earlier, you can see just how they're preparing. An armored personnel carrier uh, from a nearby military facility has been brought in along with the 200 officers. And uh, this thing, they're really going on and still negotiating by telephone, but they are going to be prepared to do whatever it takes, it appears, to get this thing over with as soon as possible. Brad? Well, Gary, there's been really no discernible um activity going on out there that you've been able to uh, hear or certainly see then in the last 30 or 45 minutes? Well, this, uh, this compound, the people inside it are extremely media savvy. They have a satellite dish. We're not sure which broadcast they're tapping into, switching back and forth between. So the authorities are keeping uh, their distance from the media to make sure no information that we might inadvertently uh, report leaks into them and makes it easier for them to uh, defend that compound if the authorities do have to go in after them. Okay, thank you very much, Gary. Stand by, we may be cutting back to you if need be, and of course, let us know if something's happening down there. Earlier tonight, David Korish, who's also known as Vernon Howell, the leader of the Branch Davidian sect, did a rambling interview with CNN. ATF says when they pulled up to the compound this morning, the cultists opened fire. Korish says ATF fired first. They came up in the truck, and it had a gooseneck trailer behind it. Now, how many was that, David? How many came? Well, uh, at least 15, 20 got out of the back. And how were so they, they dressed? All came, they all came locked and cocked. And so I opened the front door as they were running up. Of course, you know, their tactical expertise. They've got their guns aimed and everything. Were they in uniform, sir? Oh, they were in complete bad uniform. And uh, they started hollering, you know. Uh, all of them hollered. I didn't know what they were saying. And I had planned, and I told the people all along, that our intention is never to have to use these weapons. The only problem with the people on the outside is that they do not understand what we believe. But the so shooting... I had very thoroughly informed, I have been doing this ever since 1985. Somehow the shooting started. Was well, it they, intense? They started firing at me. And so what happened was is that I fell back in the door and the bullets started coming through the door. And so then what happened was some of the some of the young men and stuff started firing on them. And I, I was already hollering. I was saying, you know, hey, go away. You know, I was hollering, go away. There's women and children here. Let's talk. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, a lot of pain? Uh, a little bit. Uh, it's starting to wake up. When I first got hit, it, it didn't hurt. But, it is your contention that the approaching officers Look, they, fired they're first. Men. They're human beings, okay? They fired first and then you... you, you they fired on us first, but like I say, they were scared. You see, the rumors that are going around, like I say, they were scared. And you can't blame these men, and I don't judge them, for doing their job. You know, and that's what makes me so sad, is that ever since I started presenting these seven seals, no one gets angry at me because they don't believe it, but because they see right from the scriptures what I'm showing. David, could I ask something that might be a, a harder question for you? And I don't mean it to be Go per ahead. personal at all, Mr. Korsh, but if something happens to you, where does the leadership go in your group? You see, in heaven, my father gave me a book, and in 1959 I was born. It's a mystery of Matthew 24, where the carcasses the eagles be gathered. Scripture is put into a code so that the ungodly should not understand, as Daniel 11 and 12 tells us. So the New Testament church was told after John's day that there'd come a revelation according to seven seals. Mr. Korsh, this, this so far is definitely your story. I want you now, if you will, to tell me as best you can how you believe this episode 
will we end if you can louder, control sir. it. We're getting a bad disconnect, bad connection. Let me just ask you how you believe this episode, this experience you're having, will end. In Scripture, in Psalms 2, for instance, the key of David, Christ tells you he has the key of David. He can open up something with the key of David. In Psalms 2, it says the heathen will rage. And they'll imagine vain things, and they'll go against the Lord and his anointed, and they'll say, let us break his bands and cast his cords from us. The thing that binds Christ, the true Christ, to the Father is seven seals. The Lamb has seven eyes. He knows exactly what the seven seals are. Now, the reason why Revelation talks about Babylon is because any man who stood up saying that he's a witness for Christ and has not known the seven seals is false. That's why Revelation was written. Mr. Kors, could... When you read it, you'll see exactly how it's going to end. That was David Kors. He's the leader of this cult. Earlier, an ATF agent in a news conference had pronounced his name Korish, but uh, he says that his last name is pronounced Korish. At least six people were killed in the gun battle, including four federal agents. We're going to show you some scenes now from Hillcrest Baptist Medical Center in Waco when some of the wounded came in. One agent from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms died at Providence Medical Center in Waco. One ATF agent underwent surgery and is in intensive care. A third ATF agent was treated and released from that hospital. Sixteen ATF agents were brought into Hillcrest Baptist Medical Center in Waco. Two of those agents were dead on arrival at the hospital. A third also later died at the hospital. Seven agents remain hospitalized. Six were treated and released. According to cult leader David Korish, one child was killed in the compound this morning. Two adults were wounded. ATF officials say a second cult member was killed in a shootout with agents tonight. Another cult member was also wounded in tonight's gunfire. Quite a bit of carnage down in McLennan County today. That's the latest for now. Stay tuned to Channel 8 throughout the night. Our next scheduled report will be in 30 minutes, and of course, if we need to cut back, we will. And we also will be showing our nighttime programming in its entirety. For now, Brad Watson, Channel 8 News. This has been a News 8 special report. We now return you to our regularly scheduled... ...Christ himself, so um, when he says he'll be back, there's a lot you can read into that. Brad? Gary, your thoughts, please, on the remarks earlier by the ATF that they were afraid that something rash might happen with the remaining cult members, the 75 or so remaining cult members, inside that compound if this progressed uh, through the night uh, into tomorrow. Uh, given the remarks by Korish at this point, um, any sense down there that uh, they might be doing something drastic in mass, uh, a la the uh, Guyana situation in 1978? I know that's been talked about earlier today. Well, the best source on this, I think, is probably the local Waco newspaper, which has been involved in an eight-month investigation of the Branch Davidians. And uh, they're quoting members as saying, now, you know, you have to be willing to die for your cause. You have to be willing to die for God. And as we've said before, it appears they are willing to kill for their beliefs. And so uh, there's, this, uh, there's this feeling that, uh, and some reporting that, you know, if they die for their cause, they go to heaven. And uh, so that, I'm sure that's playing into the minds of the authorities as they try to negotiate this thing to a peaceful settlement that... Uh, that it may not be that easy, that there may not, these people may not be afraid to, to die. And so as they're trying to negotiate this thing, they're trying to convince them to come out and to give up and to come out and, uh, and not hurt anyone else or hurt themselves, they're dealing with a mind that, a mindset that says perhaps that death is good. Okay, thanks very much, Gary. Anything else to add at this point? Well, Brad, it's, uh, it has been a long ordeal here. As I say, I've said many times, they're keeping us some distance away from the actual command post, away from the officers, so we really can't gauge what their mood is. At the ATF news conference earlier, they talked about how anxious some of the officers were to get back in and get this thing over. But we also know that they are trying to negotiate this thing to an end, and uh, they'll, they're going to try to get a peaceful settlement out of it. Releasing the children... Uh, there's, once again, there's uh, some of the reading in this uh, long investigative series that the local Waco paper has been doing. They talk about uh, how the children of this sect were going to come back after the end of the world. There's a lot of talk about the seventh seal, which is talked about in Revelations, which uh, refers to the time of the, of the tribulation and the rapture and, uh, and Armageddon. 
and that uh, this man has the ability to release or open the seventh seal, which will, I guess, begin Armageddon, if I understand the explanation that was given to me by, uh, by a revelation expert I talked to on the phone a little while ago, uh, that, that the seventh seal that he's thinking he can unleash revelation, I think on the radio he talked about you'd be, he was gonna do something and you'd look up in the sky and you would see the Son of Man. There's a lot of very ominous sound, a lot of ominous feel to what's coming out of the camp and what's coming out of the investigation. So it's a very, very unpredictable situation here right now. Okay, thank you very much. Gary Reeves doing a yeoman's job down there with the rest of the Channel 8 crews covering this ongoing standoff between the cultists and uh, police down there. Right now we want to release to you the first reports we have of the dead. This is from a a uh, Associated Press dispatch that we just released. These are the people who were killed today. 32-year-old Steve Willis of the ATF Houston Field Division office. He was assigned to Houston. Robert J. Williams, 26 years old of the ATF New Orleans Field Division. He was assigned to the Little Rock office. Conway LeBleau, 30 years old of the ATF New Orleans Field Division. He was also assigned to the New Orleans office. And 28-year-old Todd McKeon, of ATF New Orleans Field Division assigned to New Orleans. Those are the known deaths of four ATF agents confirmed killed today in the shootout this morning at 9.30 when the ATF rolled up trying to carry out a raid, search warrants and an arrest warrant of David Koresh, the cult leader, and the ATF agents were met by ferocious gunfire. Those are the four who are confirmed dead. There are uh, 14 injured, according to ATF, uh, seven agents uh, remain hospitalized in Waco tonight. And uh, we understand also from the reports we've had throughout the day that uh, there are two dead cult members. One, according to Mr. Koresh in his interview from CNN, was a two-year-old who was killed this morning during the raid. And then another cult member was killed tonight in some shooting that happened uh, somewhere around 6 or 7 o'clock. We're still unclear exactly about when that happened, but those two cult members uh, were killed. We understand that uh, the ATF agents came from three field offices, Dallas, Houston, and New Orleans. From this report we have here from the Associated Press, none of the ATF agents assigned to the Dallas Field Division office were killed. They were from uh, Houston and New Orleans. We will be back in 30 minutes with continuing coverage of the standoff that continues down in McLennan County, east of Waco, so uh, stay tuned. And we will now rejoin our regular nighttime programming. Brad Watson, Channel 8 News. This has been a News 8 special report. We now return you to our regularly scheduled program. On the lines today, back out to surrounding the compound, a lot of questions uh, for the agents in here about their strategy, just why they decided to go into the compound uh, in the morning, exactly when they did, and, and uh, using the methods that they did. Uh, they say hindsight is 2020, and of course, uh, given the way the events happened, they might do things differently now, but they say they were hoping to use the element of surprise. However, obviously no one inside the compound was surprised by their actions. They uh, didn't have a whole lot of information they could share with us at this briefing this morning. They do have another one planned for 3.30 for this afternoon. We're hoping we'll be able to get a little bit more uh, at that time, and we'll have it for you then. Okay? okay, John, we'll be talking to you after that briefing at 3.30 this afternoon. Thank you very much for the update. And those of you who have tuned in throughout this ordeal know the situation started yesterday morning when federal agents attempted to issue a search and arrest warrant. Texas News 5's Deborah Ferguson has been trying to find out what is in the warrants, and she joins us live now by telephone. Um, what, what was the impetus for yesterday's raid, Deborah? Brad, that is something we still don't know. We came to the federal courthouse after the doors opened to try and find out what was in those warrants and have not had any success. The arrest warrant was for cult leader David Koresh, the charge possessing illegal weapons. The search warrants would have allowed agents to look through the compound for those weapons. We wanted to find out what evidence was used to obtain the warrants, what proof the agents had that could convince the judge to sign the arrest and search warrants. But this afternoon, those warrants have been sealed. According to the U.S. Attorney's Office here, they will not be opened until the standoff is over. Now, meanwhile, Brad, there are two cult members who remain in custody. Both were arrested yesterday, one early in the day, the second after the 6 p.m. gun battle where one cult member was killed and another wounded. Wounded. Both are being held on federal charges at some point. They will have to be brought before a judge for official notification of the charges. 
as well as have a bond amount set. Now, last night we were at the McLennan County Jail. A jail supervisor told us that a special unit had be, had to be brought in to fingerprint those individuals to get their identities. We do not know yet, Brad, if those identities have been determined. Information, as you can imagine, is um, rather hard in coming out here. We call different numbers trying to get information. And we keep getting referred to another. But as far as the arrest warrants, the search warrants, they are keeping a tight lid on those until the situation is over, obviously afraid that if the, what's in those gets leaked out, it could um, hamper any efforts to bring this to a peaceful conclusion. That's the situation here in uh, downtown Waco, Brad. Okay. Deborah, thank you very much for that update, and uh, we'll be talking to you throughout the course of the day, I'm sure. So you stand by there. Thanks, Deborah. Well, during this, David Koresh has talked about a reference from the Bible, something called the Seventh Seal. That's right. Last night on KRLD Radio, he talked repeatedly about the Seven Seals. And when we come back, we're going to find out what that's all about. Don't go away. It is a rainy, drizzly day outside Waco, where, as you can see in the background there, the compound, David Korish, and um, maybe up to 75 of his followers still inside. This nation is going to be made an example to all nations that God tolerates infidelity only for a time. But when you hurt a man that tries to teach the seven seals, you're disconnecting yourself from a chance of being saved to the mercy of Christ. That is the voice of David Koresh, the leader of the Branch Davidians, and he talked overnight at length with KRLD Radio. In his conversation, he repeatedly has mentioned the seven seals. He's also made other references to the Bible's book of Revelation. That's right, and joining us now is Dr. Eugene Boring from the Bright Divinity School at TCU. And Dr. Boring, what is all of this talk and what is the significance of the seven seals? Well, the book of Revelation is a book of symbolic visions written in a kind of uh, language and literature that's very common in the first century and understood by people in the first century. One of those series of visions pictures uh, God on the heavenly throne holding a sealed book in his hand and then there's another figure uh, pictured as a lamb who comes and takes the book from God's hand and begins one by one to break these seven seals. As he does this, why catastrophic events uh, occur on the earth, it was a symbolic and encouraging way of speaking to people in the first century, uh, saying something like, the terrors and catastrophes catastrophes of history are all somehow in God's hands. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Have there been several times, and I, I assume there have, mm -hmm. over the centuries when people have thought that mm -hmm. these seals were broken? Yes, uh, there are actually two main ways of understanding this book, and one way is the way I've already described, that it was written to people in the first century. It was understood by them. It was an encouraging word to them and uh, that it, it is not talking about later times, it's not talking about our time, it's not a prediction of later times. But the alternate way, and there have been people uh, usually outside the mainstream of Christianity all down through the centuries who have understood the book of Revelation as a prediction of later times, especially their own time. Uh, these people always see the seventh seal, the last one, as referring to their own time. So for instance, during the uh, Napoleonic Wars in the mm -hmm. 19th century, people understood, oh, now we're in the seventh seal, mm -hmm. this is the last time. Uh, during the uh, First World War, the Kaiser was thought of as the beast of Revelation, and the wars were thought of as the last battles of Revelation, and that was thought of as the seventh seal then. What we're hearing out of Waco, though, sort of a perverse interpretation, if you will, of that? Yes, it is. Uh, all people who understand the book of Revelation to be prediction uh, certainly don't understand it the way this cult does. But that uh, predictive understanding, again, not the mainstream understanding of Christianity, but that predictive understanding does serve as the background for uh, the kind of understanding that this cult has. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for being with us today. It's interesting to hear your insights on what we're hearing about. Thank you, Doctor. And we'll be right back. Still ahead, we'll have a look at some of the national news that's in the news today. Meanwhile, the standoff continues at that compound outside Waco. We'll have an update. His, his what we would consider fanaticism um, is 
is overpowering in his personality. And when it came out, it, it uh, didn't seem to have an end to it. Did you get a sense at all of what he thought the outcome might be? Well, yes, he feels that the outcome is going to be death for himself. It's important, however, to point out that Karish did not indicate that other people would also die. His intent appears to be martyrdom. Once again this afternoon, there has been uh, some recent activity outside the compound with some children being released, and we'll continue to bring you the very latest on the cult shootings at Mount Carmel. The total we have so far is 10 children, and more children may be released before nightfall. We'll continue to bring you the very latest on the cult shootings, but right now we're going to take a break. When we come back, is the wet weather here to stay? Mike Berger's got some answers when we come back. This is bad as sin, <laughs> but this is the place that God told us to come and we're studying the message. It turns out that the Schwarzenegger look-alike is David Korish's enforcer. He's the one who hands out punishment to cult members who step out of line. As you know, there's a great crisis amongst us in this message, but not for me. I have not in any wise deferred from my responsibility to give the truth that this God has given to me. That is the God that I've never known. Another home movie. We get a glimpse of the cult's humble beginnings. The year is 1986, and David Korish has brought his followers to a pine forest outside the little town of Palestine, Texas. At first glance, it almost looks idyllic, like some sort of summer camp. But first impressions can be deceiving. Look closely. You see, there are no bungalows at this campsite, no housing at all. Just a bunch of broken down school buses, motorhomes, and tents amid the trees. No electricity, no running water, no toilets. For 90 members of the cult, this was a temporary Jonestown. Hello. Hello. Later, they would move the compound near Waco. This is what it looked like before the barbed wire, the guard towers, and the high-tech surveillance systems. Just old, dilapidated shacks. He gives the buck to the lamb! The lamb shows you the man of white horse! Get it in your mind! That's what he says! You stupid idiot! Back then, there were around 15 children in the cult, smiling, playing, posing for the camera. Some of these children are not with the cult anymore. Their parents got out. But some of these children are reportedly still part of the group. They're seven years older now, old enough for the girls to be taken by David Korish as wives. He's bragged about having 15 wives. And there are fears that some of these girls are today among them. Like this woman, she's one of David Korish's child babies. I'm showing a bl baby blanket. Hold it. Three years after these home movies were made, the preachings of David Korish became increasingly angry, full of violent threats against all non-believers. He shall fill the places with the dead body. In the lamb, in the middle of the white horse, going to cause a lot of people to be dead. He shall wound the heads over many countries. The home movies of 1986 show a deceptively happy time. We didn't want to hurt anybody. No, I've, I've owned a BB gun once in my life, maybe twice. You see? You play as well. None, none of the guys in this, in this group have ever been invested for anything. Just like the man at Jonestown, David Korish would soon predict the approach of doomsday. Do you hear? Do you understand? It's war. These governments of this world are coming to end. The minds of men are going to be focused upon a fact. Go ahead and laugh. Go ahead and muse in your mind. And see what happens to you, fool. Now it appears the night has indeed come. Not for the world, but for David Korish and his Waco cult. And see what happens to you, fool. The cult leader not only used movies, he also used music. One of his songs was titled, The Mad Man of Waco. Thanks, Doug. Those home movies give you a sense that it's as revealing as it is frightening to see in the mind of a madman like that. Sure do.